is one of the ministers uh, with us, and he's going to pick up the saints. He's going to rent a van, 15-passenger van. We're going to cover the costs, and he'll be picking up the saints that are flying in uh, from different areas to be there. Uh, you just get up to your information, and we'll have him at the airport to transport you from the airport to the resort. So we pray, God, that <clears throat> all those that, you know, try to – that plan to make it be able to make it. But you don't have to worry about getting a taxi or anything like that. He'll be able to pick you up and get you transported to the resort. Also, all those that's on the island uh, that want to attend the event, he'll be able to pick those up as well as long as he have your information to be able to pick you up and take you back. All right. So govern yourselves accordingly. We, we thank God for all things. We want to take a moment to thank God also for a beautiful trip this past weekend. We had a beautiful trip to Newport News, Virginia. I thank God for allowing us a safe travel as we travel to and from Newport News, Virginia. We had a beautiful time. I want to thank God for all of those that went down in in the name of Jesus Christ. We baptized, I'm not quite sure how many, but we baptized quite a few that, that was during that weekend. Uh, last weekend, quite a few went down in war in the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank God for all of you. Glad to get a chance to meet all of you all uh, that we met for the first time and glad to see you all again that we had met before. We thank God for all things. Had a beautiful time, beautiful weekend, beautiful fellowship. Beautiful fellowship. We certainly thank God for all of it. All right, brothers and sisters, tonight, <clears throat> we want to take our time tonight and get into the word of God. Uh, we have some emails here that we're going to uh, get into. And also, I have some calls in my office we're going to take. Uh, we will get the emails first. Better yet, we're going to get the calls first. And then we will proceed on from there. Twin, if you would, go ahead and let it roll. Give me. The first uh, caller number three, if you would. Caller number three. Once you get it, let it out. Hey, uh, Pastor K. Murray, this um, Brother Michael. We spoke not too long ago. Uh, I actually sent you guys a letter also um, concerning the topic that we talked about over the phone. Um, and I, I'm just uh, so ready to get baptized over. Um, we talked about this already, but like, uh, you know, I just want to get these sins up off me. You know, it's like I, I I can't worship God properly. It's like I can't I can't even pray right into these. You know, I, I just need these sins washed off me. I need to be baptized over um, because, like I told you, I was baptized in Pastor Jennings um, under his. I was baptized. I was baptized under him, and I just want to get baptized over so my sins can be washed away. Um, I don't have no money to travel at the moment. And uh, I know that you said, like, rent a van, but, or, like, a car or something, but uh, I don't, I, it might sound like I'm asking for too much, but, you know, it's like, I, I've never done that before, so it's, it's like traveling that far is going to be kind of, you know, I never drove that far before. I'm still a new beginner at driving. I've been driving for about a year or two now, but I never, like, drove that far like 12 hours away, 10 hours away. I was trying to see, like, maybe if you guys somehow can, like, fly me out there and just so I get baptized and then I can come back home and continue working and stuff and um, take care of what I got to take care of. But uh, if you can hit me back at 463. Let's, let's block his number there. Let me say to my brother, we appreciate your call. I thank God for you, my brother. I, I do remember you and I spoke, and I remember your sincereness. And wanting to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I remember how sincere you was about it. And I, I hear your sincereness is still there. Brother, what you do, we're going to help you, my brother. What you do is you check into a flight. You check into a flight. We'll be in Atlanta, Lord willing, on next weekend, October 29th and 30th. We'll be in Atlanta uh, for a two-day fellowship. We'll fly you to Atlanta. We'll fly you to Atlanta and fly you back home to your state. We'll fly you in, let you be there with us for a couple of days, have you in some good service there for a couple of days, get you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and fly you back home. All right? Check into some flights, brother. Uh, 
for the weekend of October 29th. And we'll get you there. We'll fly you there and we'll fly you back. I will give you a call, Lord willing, probably around about Thursday or Friday. No later than Friday. You let me know what you found and we'll cover the cost. We'll get you there, brother. Your desire to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's your desire. Then by, by all means, brother, by the help of God, we, we want to help you make that happen. All right. You, you're sincere about it and we know the importance of it and we'll do all we can, my brother, to be a help to you. OK, so check into a flight when I give you a call, Lord willing, by Friday. Let me know the cost of it. And Lord willing, we'll take care of you. All right. Look forward to meeting you, brother, in Atlanta. OK. All right, brother, if you would, give me caller number six. Caller number six, if you would. Saturday, Sunday, 8, 15. Yes, Governor, this is just a car. And I'm calling because after listening to you and um, watching you, um, I want to get out of the church of, um, the church of um, our Lord. Jesus Christ, um, apostolic doctrine. I want to, um, I want to come over to what you are teaching now, but, um, you don't have a church here in South Carolina, like, um, I'm in Irmo, South Carolina, and I see some empty buildings here. <laughs> um, I just, I'm just home. I watch you on TV. And I really need a church home. I really need to find somewhere to go. Uh, do you suggest that I stay where I'm at, even though I believe in the Son of God? Or, or do you suggest that I stay at home because the Word of God, I know the Word of God say, um, that um, we're not supposed to forsake the assembly of the saints, but will I go to hell because I'm not with the saints? Uh, because I'm by listening there too, they're not the real things. So will I go to hell for that? Both staying home and watching you on TV. So could you give me a call? I got me not a call back. Could you answer my question? I would really appreciate it. Thank you. And y'all have a blessed and safe day. Sister Carr, South Carolina. We certainly thank God for your call, sister. Sister, I want to help you. I want to help you. I, I've heard that, you know, for a long period of time, that scripture quoted, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. And some take that scripture and allow that scripture to hold them in bondage, hold them in falsehood. You know, meaning, you know, they, they think in this mean, it means they have to set in falsehood because there's no other place uh, in their area for them to go. That's not at all what that scripture means, sister. Now, what I want to do tonight, I want to help you get a good understanding of the word of God. Brace it, give me Hebrews, son, 10. And we're going to start at verse 23. I want to read down to the scripture that she quoted, forsaking not to assemble yourselves together. But we've got to get an understanding, sister Carr, of what is being talked about here. Hebrew 10, brace it, start at verse 23, son. What did it say? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Let us hold fast the profession of what, Bracey? Of our faith without wavering. Sister Carr, the Bible is teaching hold fast the profession of your faith. Your faith without what? Without wavering. Not wavering in your faith. Now, listen to this now. We, we, we go into verse 25. But in order to understand 25, you first got to understand verse 23. Read it again, Bracey. What did it say? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Hold fast the profession of your faith, your belief without wavering. What is our faith? What is our belief? Bracey, give me Galatians 2, 16. Give me Galatians chapter 2 and at verse 16. I want you to hear the Apostle Paul here talk about the faith that we're supposed to have. Galatians 2 and at verse 16 said what? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. A man is not justified by the works of the law. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. 
By the faith of who, Brace? Jesus Christ. The faith of who, Brace? Jesus Christ. Hebrews said, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. Our faith is in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.16 again said what? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. But by what? But by the faith of Jesus Christ. By the faith of Jesus Christ. Read it. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. That we might be the be justified by the faith of Christ. That we might be justified by what? By the faith of Christ. Justified by what? By the faith of Christ. We are justified by our faith, our belief in Christ. What did it say? And not by the works of the law. And not by the works of the law. What did it say? For by the works of the law. By the works of the law. Shall no flesh be justified. All right. Give me, brace it for the sake of time, verse 20. Straight to the point now, Galatia 2.20. What faith is Paul talking about? 20 said what? I am crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Listen to this, Sister Carl. The life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Faith of who? The Son of God. So the faith that we're supposed to have without wavering is faith in the Son of God. Continue to read, brace it. What did the Bible say? Who loved me. He loved, who loved me. And gave himself for me. All right. So our faith is supposed to be in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now go back, son, to Hebrew 10 and start at verse 23 again. What did it say? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That faith supposed to be in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, without wavering. What did it say? For he is faithful that promise. He's faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love. Consider one another and provoke to, to provoke to love. And to good works. And to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Wait a minute. Not forsaking the assembling of who? Of ourselves. I, 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 ourselves. That's, that's ourselves now. Who are you talking about? Verse 23 again. Let, said, us, what? let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Uh, our faith. Uh, our faith. Our faith is in the Son of God. Verse 25 said what? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves uh, together. Uh, ourselves. Who is the our here? Those that's got their faith in the Son of God. Those that's got their faith in the Son of God, we must not to forsake to assemble ourselves together. The scripture ain't told us to go and assemble with unbelievers. Now, you, 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 now, based on what I'm receiving from you, the church you've been going to, they don't teach the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So you feeling as if, because the Bible said not to forsake to assemble yourself, you still got to go there. Sister, they're not, they, look here, they're not believers in the faith that we're supposed to have. And if they don't believe in the faith that we're supposed to have, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and that verse 14. You got to get an understanding. He's talking about ourselves, not forsaken to assemble ourselves. Like believers that's got the same faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God. That's what he's talking about here. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 said what? Be, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Wait a minute. Be not what? Unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You believe in the Son of God and they don't. The Bible said, be not what? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What you say, son? For what fellowship hath righteousness? What, what, what fellowship? How y'all gonna fellowship? Bible said, what fellowship have what? Righteousness with unrighteousness. How in the world righteousness is gonna fellowship with unrighteousness? How in the world can two walk together except there be an agreement there? It just don't work, sister. Hear me talk. If you are a believer, my God, in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, you got the right faith. If they don't have that faith, the Bible said, verse 14 again, said what, race? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? How in the world are we walking in the light? Jesus is the light. They don't believe in the light, but we're going to come along and try to mingle light with darkness. It just don't work, sister. It just don't work. Do you understand? Hear me talking. Let me tell you something. I love all mankind, and I'll go to any of these churches to preach. If they invite me, I'm going. But I can't invite them here to preach. 
Oh, no, no, I can't. I, listen, John condemned me for putting them in the pulpit. And, and listen, not only do he condemn me, he condemned you for bidding them God's speed. It goes both ways. Do you understand? This is not about friendship. Man, we got to obey the word of God. Read that song. What did it say? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What did it say, son? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? How in the world light and darkness gonna fellowship? What did it say? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? What did it say, son? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What infidence? part hath he that believeth with an infidel? How in the world y'all gonna fellowship? Man, here we believers in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and here you don't believe? And we're going to come along with artificial fellowship. Certain things, look here, think about it. Certain things is off limits. You can't talk about it. No, no, you, you, you can't talk about it. Man, you go in these no son of God preachers, uh, no son of God believers, churches, and, and, and start talking about the son of God, you're fixing to have a conflict. It's fixing to be a problem. Do you understand? So the Bible is saying, what fellowship have light with darkness? There's no fellowship there. Hear me talking now. What did it say, son? And what conquered have Christ with Belial? What did it say, son? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What infi part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what else? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Read it, brace. For ye are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the living God. As God has said. What did God say? I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. And, will, and walk in them. Read it, brace. And I will be their God. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. What did he say, son? Wherefore come out from among them. Oh, Oh, now, we got to show love and stay in fellowship. Come out from among them. Do what, Brace? Come out from among them. But the Bible said, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. Come out from among them. Look here. Look here. Look here. The Bible said, come out from among them. Yeah. You got to get the language right now. It said, come out from among them. You Look, these, these folks don't believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Come out from among them. But for us, those that have the right faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Bible says, forsake not to assemble ourselves together. Ourselves. Not with everybody. Say ourselves. Man, you're not a believer. I can't sit up in there and listen to that junk. What did the Bible say, son? Wherefore, come out from among them. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the and Lord. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Read it, son. And will be a father unto you. Read it. And you shall be my sons and daughters. He said, come out. And that's what Ella Murray teach. Come out. Come out. Sister, what you got to understand is this. You can't eat from every table. It's just not safe. Do you understand? I want you to think about it. If you go to a restaurant, even in the next and you look at that score up on the wall. And that score up on the wall say 56. <laughs> Are you waiting on the waitress to come? Uh, uh, hold now. Hold now. Look here. It's a lot of people in there. But the score say 56. Health department that came along and graded them and got 56 on the wall. Are you staying there? No, you know you're getting out of there in a hurry. Do you understand? You don't care how many people in the building. You're getting out of there in a hurry. Let me tell you something. Uh, these no son of God churches, look, it ain't a 56. My God, it's not even a six. It's a zero. It's a zero. Do you understand? It's a zero. What you stand up in there for? Do you understand? My God, they done failed. God knows how in the world you got a church. But yet the head of the church, which is the son of God, has been kicked out of the church. So the head has no place in his body. Think about it. The head has no part of the body. Which I'm talking about the body of Christ. He's supposed to be the head, but yet you don't eliminate the head. But you say you God's church. Man, that's a zero. Get up out of there. Get up out of there. You been talking, my God, man, don't eat nothing up in there. No, Bible said all tables are full of vomit and filthiness and there ain't no place clean. That's right. Do you understand? My God, that stuff is contaminated. Right. You sitting right there, my God, man, here, here, you know, look, you see the 56 on the wall and in the natural, you see the 56 on the wall and you go in there and eat little critters all over the place. 
My God, you get a bowl of soup, my God, and you, <laughs> your soup moving. So look at here, your soup moving. My God, man, look at the 56 let you know to get out of there. It let you know to get out of there. You want to sit? My God, then eat your moving soup. Catch it. <laughs> Catch your soup. My God, man, when they start preaching God ain't got no son, that's a zero. Get up out of there. Don't eat that stuff. Hosea 4 and that, that uh, verse 9, son. Hosea 4 and that verse 9. Don't eat that, that, that junk, sister. Let me tell you, I don't care how nice the pastor is. I don't care. I don't care how nice he is, how he help everybody. I don't care. My God, man, if he's preaching God the Father ain't got a son, then he's not fit to try to lead you nowhere. My God, talking about taking to, 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 to some kingdom of God. He ain't fit. If you don't know God got a son, and that son is our savior. He's our advocate. He's our high priest. He's the mediator. He the, he's the propitiator of our sin. He don't know that. He don't know that, but yet he's going to lead you to a kingdom. The kingdom that he's leading you to, I guarantee you, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there, sister. Hear me talking now. You don't want to go there. Hosea chapter 4, son, and at verse number 9. Hosea 4 and verse 9, what did the prophet say? And there shall be like people, like priests. Here's the danger. There shall be like people, like priests. In other words, you people following the priest, you take on the same spirit of the priest. That's, right. That's what the Bible teach. There shall be like people, like priests. You set their sister under that foolishness. You take on the spirit of that foolishness. You better try to get out of there, run, and don't look back. Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. You understand? Don't die and go to hell for nobody. And don't God die and go to hell with nobody. I hope and pray, my sister, you got an understanding. No, no, come out of there. Whenever the Bible said, forsake not to assemble ourselves together, Paul is dealing with like-minded believers. Give me Acts 2, 44, sir. Give me Acts chapter 2 and at verse 44. Let me show you what the apostle said here. Acts chapter 2 and at verse 44. Listen to the apostle Peter. What did it say, son? And all that believed were together. Wait a minute. It said all that what, Brace? All that believed. All that what, Brace? That believed. Were what? Were together. Well, hey, when it said all, all that believed, folks often quote, you know, all, all, all supposed to be together. You, you left out the most important part. It said all that believed were together. What, was, what did they have to believe in order for them to be together? Give me verse 22, son. Fall back to Acts 2.22. What was he talking about, Bracey? Ye men of Israel. Read it. Hear these words. What words? Jesus of Nazareth. Oh! Jesus of who? Of Nazareth. What about it? A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders. A and man approved of God by you? How? By miracles and wonders and signs. What did he say, son? Which God did by him. Read it. In the midst of you. Read it. As you yourselves also know. What did he say, son? Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and for knowledge of God. And? You have taken and by wicked hands have, have crucified and slain. When Peter got through preaching this, he concluded it by saying at verse 44, son, what did he say? And all, all, that, be and all that believed were together. The Jesus Christ that Peter was preaching. When he got done preaching Jesus, he concluded it by saying, all that believe, they were together. Sister, you are to come together with believers. Not with any and everybody, but with believers. All right? I hope and pray you got to understand. First email. <sighs> Dear Ella Murray, we apologize not being able to say goodbye in person and stay for the Sunday afternoon services in Virginia due to work schedules and long travel time to New York. Our time spent there with you and all the saints was wonderful. The fruit of your labor is on full display throughout your ministry. There was so much love and hospitality shown. More importantly, the spirit, Jesus Christ, was among us all. We felt the love and fellowship that Jesus Christ gospel teaches. Now we can rest in Jesus, knowing that we made our baptism right with the Son of God believers. Hallelujah. 
Hope to see you all again. Since you are our new family in Christ, keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with conviction, unapologetically, as you always do. We will keep you in your ministry in our prayers. Amen. P.S. Here's my number. Pastor, Elder, if there's anything I can do to be of assistance, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you and peace be unto you, Ed and Helen Garcia. Brother and Sister Garcia, we certainly, certainly thank God for you all. We appreciate you all making the journey from New York down to Virginia. It was certainly a pleasure to get a chance to meet you all. Glad to see how the word of God is so effective. Like the Bible said, it will not return into God void, but it's going to accomplish what God sent it out to do. Glad to see how the word of God, how the Lord through and by his word, open y'all understanding and, and put a hunger and a thirst in you all for righteousness. And you came all the way to Virginia, got a chance to meet you all. And I even appreciate when the bus rolled up, y'all was right there to greet the bus, to greet us as we got off the bus in Virginia. We certainly do appreciate y'all. It was indeed a pleasure to meet you all. These saints came out of first church, husband and wife came out of first church. And uh, had been, I think, had been baptized over there and, and the Lord opened their understanding and they came and went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ right there in Virginia. So we thank God uh, for them. We do look forward to getting a chance to meet you all again, hopefully real soon. Thank God for both of you all. All right. Next email. Prayers needed. It writes. Now, I can't read all of this. I can't. Matter of fact, it's so graphic until I only can read just a little bit of it. But I do want to try to be a help. I want to try to help the writer here. All right. He writes, prayers needed. I am seeking counseling, advice, deliverance. I have uncontrolled homosexual urges. I feel like demons entered into me as I was molested as a child. Can you help me? Let me say this to the writer. Yes, we can help you through and by the word of God. If demons entered into you based on what you're saying, you was molested as a child, and now you're saying you have strong homosexual urges, and you, you're asking for help. Well, your help is in the word of God. Your help is in the word of God. The only one that's able to help you is the one that these spirits are subject to. That is the only one that's able to help you, the one that these spirits are subject to. Homosexuality, it is a spirit. You said uh, that demons entered into you, all right? Let me show you who the demons are subject to. Give me Mark, son, one and at verse 23. Give me Mark, chapter one. And at verse 23, let me show you who the demons are subject to. And that way you can know who to turn to in order to overcome these demons or these unclean spirits. Mark 1 and at verse 23. What did it say, son? And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. There was in the synagogue a man with what? An unclean spirit. And what did it say, son? And he cried out. He cried out. Saying, let us alone. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? What have we to do with thee, thou who? Jesus of Nazareth. Thou who? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. What did it say, son? Are thou come to destroy us? Have you come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. I know thee who thou art. The Holy One of God. You're the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying. Jesus did what? Rebuked him. Jesus did what? Rebuked him. And what did he say? Saying, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. And come out of him. All right. You're saying that you have demons in you. What did Jesus say? Hold thy peace and come out of him. These demons are subject to Jesus Christ. Right up. Whatever demon you say is in you, whatever spirit you're fighting with, is subject to Jesus Christ. If you wholeheartedly, I'm talking wholeheartedly, turn to Jesus Christ, then the Lord will deliver you from any and every unclean spirit that the devil can spit out of hell. Trust me, they are subject to Jesus Christ. 
You've got to turn wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ if you want deliverance from that homosexual demon, my God, man, that's torturing you. Hear me talking now. Mark 3, 10, son. Mark chapter 3 and that verse 10. Listen to the Bible here. What did it say, son? For he had healed many. He had healed many. And so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him. They pressed upon him for to do what? To touch him. Talking about Jesus. They pressed upon Jesus to touch him. And what did it say? As many as had plagues. And what did it say? And unclean spirits when they saw him. Unclean spirits when they saw Jesus. Fell down before him. They fell down before him. And cried, say. They fell down before Jesus, right? Huh? Hear me talking now. The demons, my God, that you say don't enter into you, they're subject to Jesus Christ. They fell down before Jesus and did what? And cried, say. What did they say? Thou art the son of God. My God, man, they fell down before him and cried, thou art the son of God. What did it say? And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. He straightly charged them not to make him known. And what did it say, son? And he goes up into a mountain. My God, man, give me Mark, give me Luke, son, 4-4. I just want to show you all of these demons, all these unclean spirits is subject to Jesus Christ. Luke 440, brother. What did it say? Now, when the sun was setting, give me talk. Luke 440, what did it say? Now, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. They brought them unto Jesus. And he laid his hands on every one of them. Jesus laid his hands on every one of them. And healed them. And healed them. And devils also came out of many. Devils came out of how many? Many. Bible said devils came out of many. What did it say? Crying out and saying. What did the devils cry out saying what? Thou art Christ. Thou art Christ. The son of God. The son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. Why? For they knew that he was Christ. Ain't that so? They knew he was the Christ. They knew it. He suffered them not to speak. So listen to me. Listen to me, Ryder. My point here is to show you that all these demons, all these unclean spirits is subject to Jesus Christ. If you want deliverance from that homosexual demon or any other unclean spirit, any other demon, you must turn wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ. Otherwise in that, there's no deliverance, my God, other than through and by the one that they're subject to. And that's Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1, 12, not about verse number nine. Hebrews chapter 12 and at verse number nine. Your help, my God, is in Jesus Christ. That's where it's at. Hebrews chapter 12 and at verse nine, Brace What did it say? Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. We've had fathers of our flesh that corrected us. And we gave them reverence. And we gave them respect. Shall we not much rather be in subjection? Listen, shall we not much rather be in subjection? Unto the father of spirits. Unto the father of who? Of spirit. Father of who? Of spirit. And do what? And live. You've got to... Stay connected or be connected to the father of spirits. The one, my God, that these spirits are subject to. That way he'll make them spirits leave you alone. That's your only help. That's your only deliverance. It's Jesus Christ. These spirits are subject to Jesus Christ. I don't care if it's homosexuality. I don't care if it's lesbianism. I don't care if it's alcoholism. I don't care if it's drug addiction. I don't care if it's a gambling addiction. I don't care if it's an addiction to pornography. I don't care what kind of demon you're fighting with. Those unclean spirits, those demons are subject to Jesus Christ. If you want deliverance, turn wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ and he'll make them spirits leave you alone. Hear me talk. Your help is in the name of the Lord. It's in Christ Jesus. All right. Next email. God said he didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. My definition of fulfill is you're no longer, you no longer have to serve a physical communion or do physical water baptism. Now, I want y'all to hear what the writer is saying. First of all, he said, God said he didn't come to destroy the law and prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Well, the first error you made Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one who made that statement. That's the first error you made. Okay, then you go on and said, my definition. Well, you did tell the truth right there. You said, my definition. Well, writer, we don't go by your definition. Mm -hmm. We go by the word of God. Look here. The word of God told us to let you be a liar. Mm -hmm. 
right. and let God be true. So we got to place you where the scripture told us to put you, and that is a liar. We have to stick to what's written in the word of God. The Bible said, or better yet, his letter said, my definition of fulfill is you're no longer, you no longer have to serve a physical communion or do physical water baptism. Well, we certainly can't go by that because the scriptures teaches us to do, my God, physical communion and physical water baptism. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. First Corinthians 11, 24, run fast. First Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 24. Hear me talking now. This is the trouble you get into, writer, when you start leaning to your own understanding. Don't outsmart yourself. Just stick to what's written in the Bible. First Corinthians 11 and at verse 24 said what? And when he had given thanks, he break it and said. Verse 23, basically, what did it say? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Read it. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, what did he do? Took bread. And what did he do with it? And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, What did he say? Take, eat. This is? This is my body, which is broken for you. What did he say, sir? This do in remembrance of me. This do in what? In remembrance of me. This is what was left on record, writer, for us to do in remembrance of Jesus Christ. What did he say, sir? After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sucked, saying. What did he say? This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Read it, sir. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. What did he say, sir? For as often as ye eat this bread. As often as ye eat this bread. And drink this cup. And drink this cup. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Till what? Till he come. Have he came yet? No, sir. Well, the Bible said, do this to show forth his death until he comes. You're saying, based on your definition, we don't have to do that no more. Do you understand? We don't have to do that no more. Listen, listen to me now. We've got to do that until he comes. That's right. Until he comes. Hallelujah to God. And that was being taught after the law. That's right. That was being taught after the law. For us to do that until Jesus come back here. We got to let you be a liar and let God be true. All right. He said, uh, my definition of fulfill is you, you no longer have to serve a physical communion or do physical water baptism. He said, sir, I want you to show me chapter and verse or email me chapter and verse where John the Baptist baptized anybody with water after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Why, why are you single out John the Baptist? Why are you singing like why, why don't we deal with the apostles that Jesus gave the charge to? And he told them what to go and what to do. Why, do, why are you singing like John the Baptist? Why don't we just deal with the apostles that received the charge directly from Jesus Christ? Mark 16, Brace. Mark 16, son. And start reading around about verse 15. Mark 16 and around about verse 15. Hear me, don't sing a lot, John, John the Baptist. Let's get those who receive charge directly from Jesus Christ. He told them what to go out and do. Mark 16, Bracey, and at verse 15. What did he say, son? And he said unto them. What did he say? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world and preach the what to every creature? Preach the gospel to every creature. Read it, Bracey. He that believeth and is baptized. Oh. He that believeth and is what? And is baptized. But he said we don't have to have physical water baptism. He that believeth and is baptized. What's going to happen to it? Shall be saved. Now, should we go by you or what's written in the Bible? The Bible said he that do what, racist? He that believeth and is baptized. Shall do what? Shall be saved. Read it. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Give me verse 19 for the sake of time, son. After Jesus gave him the charge to go and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 19. What, what, what happened with Jesus? So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. And what, what did he do, sir? And sat on the right hand of God. And what did they do? And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Listen, they obeyed. They went on, look here, none of them turned around and said, well, you know, uh, 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 we don't have to do physical water baptism. That ain't what they said. That ain't what they said. Uh, Matthew, son, 28, 16. Matthew 28, 16. Right up, you're leaning to your own understanding, and that's dangerous. Hear me talking now. You need a preacher to lead you, brother. You need a preacher to guide you before you make shipwreck. Matthew 28 and at verse 16. What did it say, son? Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. The 11 who, son? 
the 11 disciples. We're dealing with the apostles and what happened, son? And when they saw him, they worshiped him. When they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, What did Jesus say? All power is given unto me in All heaven. All power is given unto me where? In heaven and in earth. Read it, son. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and do what? Teach all nations. Doing what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptizing them? Baptizing them. Baptizing them? Baptizing them. So it sounds like they still need physical baptism. That's right. The Bible said, read that, read that again, right? Doing what now? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Read it. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Whatever who commanded? Whatsoever I whatsoever I have commanded. And what do you say, sir? And lo, I am with you always. How long? Even until the end of the world. Give me Acts on chapter two. Give me Acts chapter 2 and at verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God have made that same Jesus whom you have crucified. Both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this. They were pricked in their heart. And what happened? And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. What did they say? Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them. What did Peter say? Repent and be baptized. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no. You don't need physical water baptism no more. Repent and be baptized. Why? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For, for what? For the remission of sins. And what you're going to receive. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He goes on to say, Sir, I want you to show me chapter and verse or email me chapter and verse where John the Baptist baptized anybody with water after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He writes, read Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 through 34. I will make a new covenant with the house of Judah Israel. I will put my laws in their heart and in their mind so we no longer have to follow the tradition to go out and read. I want y'all to hear that. Hear that now. He writes, read Jeremiah 31 verses 31 through 34. I will make a new covenant with the house of Judea and Israel. I will put my laws in their heart and in their mind. So we no longer have to follow the tradition to go out and read. So because the spirit been put in us, we don't have to read no more. I believe we read somewhere. Give me John, son, 539. What did the Bible say, Brace? Said? Search the scriptures. No, Brace. <laughs> we, we don't have to read no more. Search the scriptures. Why? For in them ye think you have eternal life. And that's exactly what's happening here. You need, I can tell you ain't been searching the scriptures. I can tell by your email you ain't searched the scriptures. The Bible said what, son? Search the scriptures. Read it. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. But what they testify. And they are they which testify of me. Give me Romans 15 and that verse 4, son. Romans 15 and that verse 4. Hear me talking now. And all thy getting get understanding. Brother, pay attention to the broadcast and let somebody lead you now. Hear me talking now. Romans 15 and that verse 4 said what? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Whatever was written aforetime was written for what? For our learning. Written for what? Our learning. That what? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Whatsoever things were written aforetime. Amen. It was written for our learning. Amen. Well, how are we going to know what was written if we don't read? That's right. How are we going to know what's written if we don't read? Whatsoever were written a full time was written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, son, and at verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and at verse number 13. Hear me talking now. What did it say, Braces? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and at verse 13. Paul said what? We having the same spirit of faith as? According as it is written. According as what? As it is written. As what? As it is written. What? I believe. How you know, my God, if your belief is right, if you ain't read. That stuff makes no sense. He goes on to say, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist baptized with water. There is one that comes after me who is greater than I, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So therefore, water baptism is no more. This is sad. He even give Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 6 through 8. You're given all these scriptures that you understand. He writes, for the to be, to be carnal of mind it is death, but to be spiritual of mind it is peace. 
he goes on to say Jesus was born on June 6th, December 25th. If you disagree with anything I've said in this email, please respond back to my email. I disagree with everything you said. Every word is a lie. I said every word. Bible don't say nothing about Jesus being born on December 25th. Neither does it say he was born June 6th. Neither. Next email. Hi, Pastor Murray. My husband takes me for granted. This, this is about marriage. I've got a couple of them here about marriage. Hi, Pastor Murray. My husband takes me for granted. He doesn't fix anything. He's not a take charge type of person. He doesn't tell me he loves me or that I'm beautiful. He never makes me feel special, ever. He doesn't get me anything just because, for birthdays nor for our anniversaries. This has been going on for years. We are both sanctified, baptized, and been filled with the Holy Ghost. And I know he believes wholeheartedly in the scripture that says, for a man to be as if he has no wife. But he needs to rightly divide that. I'm not just some roommate. I try to keep my mind on Jesus. I know there's far worse things going on in the world. And Jesus is at the door. And soon this world will be no more. But I can't help it. I just would like for my husband to make me feel special. Like I matter. Like I'm wanted. Sometimes it's like he can't even look at me. He shows such a lack of interest in me, it tears me up inside. Oh, but when he wants to get physical, he remembers he's married. Please point me to the scriptures that will help. I want us to be a team, but I feel so lonesome in this marriage, and I'm tired. I don't believe in divorce, so I just feel stuck. Much love to you all. God bless. Sister, let me say this. Sound like your husband just needs to be taught. He needs some teaching. And by the help of the Lord, that's what we will do. Try to encourage him to watch this program. Listen to me. First of all, Brayson, let's explain this scripture, son, in 1 Corinthians 7. At verse 29, I want you to get an understanding, my brother. When the Bible talked about they didn't have wives, be as though they had none, that don't mean ignore your wife. That don't mean show your wife no interest and don't make her feel special and don't compliment her. It don't mean that, brother. It don't mean that. First Corinthians chapter 7, bracing at verse 29. What did it say, son? But this I say, brethren. This I say, brethren. The time is short. Time is short. It remaineth that both they. It remaineth that both who? They. They. That have wives. They that have wives. Be as though they had none. Be as though they have none. Only thing Paul is teaching is time is short. Don't take your wife and put her above the word of God. Don't take your wife and exalt her and put her above God or above his word. Time is short. Don't do that, brethren. But now listen, only thing he's teaching is don't put them above God or above the word of God. A few verses after making that statement, brother, verse 32, brace it. Now what did Paul say? What did it say, son? But I would have you without carefulness. Read it. He that is unmarried. He that is unmarried. Cares for the things that belong to the Lord. Cares for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. You that are unmarried, you don't have to worry about pleasing a wife. You can just focus on the Lord. What else did it say, Brayson? But he that is married. Brother, please listen. Please listen. But he that is what, race That is married. He that is what, race That is married. Do what? Cared for the things that are of the world. Cared for the things of what? Of the world. Of what? Of the world. Read it. How he may please his wife. How he may please his wife? Amen. So he, he must care for the things of the world? How he may please who, son? His wife. Brother, if you're married, you must care for the things of the world. 
not ungodly things. Listen, I know First John 2, the Bible said, love not the world and the things that's in the world. It's talking about ungodliness, things that's against the word of God. But when Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7, he that is married cared for the things of the world, how he may please his wife. These are not ungodly things, but it's worldly things that pleases your wife. You, she said you do nothing for her on her birthday or anniversary. Say, but at night when you want to get physical, that's when you remember you're married. Brother, that's not the way you conduct yourself in marriage. Not at all, brother. You don't put your wife above God, above the word of God, but you must care for the things of the world. If your wife, my God, man, wants you to show her appreciation on her birthday, anniversary, it's no sin in that, brother. That's not ungodliness. My God, man, recognize your wife. Do something special for your wife, brother. Don't just, my God, man, make her, as she said, feel like a roommate. Don't do that. My God, man, you're going to have a miserable home and a miserable wife, and that's why your wife is right in the mud. Do you hear me talking? Look, you, you want things peaceful in your home. You want your wife, brother, my God, man, not to feel this way. Your job is to render unto her due benevolence. First Corinthians, brother, seven. Fall back to round about verse number three, basically. Verse number three, first Corinthians seven and that verse three. What did it say? Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Do benevolence is that which is good, that which he deserved. Give him that which is good, that which he deserved. Read let, it. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Husband render this to the wife. Do benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. It goes both ways. Give them that which is right, that which is des they deserve, that which makes them happy, brother. My God, not just when you want to get physical at night. You're going to have a miserable home, brother. Hear me talking now. Ella Murray want to help you. I want to help you, my brother. That's not the way you conduct yourself in a marriage. You must have a balance. Y'all listen to me well. You must have a balance. Listen. You must be able to balance, my God, man, holy, sanctified life with your marriage life. I'm not saying go out and do nothing ungodly. But although Elder Murray is holy, striving to live a life to please the Lord, I still have a companion that I have to please. Now, if I wasn't married, I wouldn't have that distraction. But I chose to get married, so I welcome that distraction, and I must fulfill my duty not only as a pastor, not only as a father, but also as a husband. You've got to know where that balance is at, brother. You've got to maintain a balance. Do you understand? A lot of saints are just not taught this. It is a balance. You've got to know how to juggle that thing and how to balance it. It, it can't be, my God, man, your wife is ignored. Your wife, she don't matter, she don't count until you want to get physical. You're going to have a miserable home. Now. That's not the way you do it, all right? Feel free. I would love to talk to both of you. I would love to do all I can, to, uh, possibly could, to be a help to you, all right? That's my number over my shoulder. Feel free to give me a call. We would love to be a help to you, all right? Next email. Beverly Anderson writes, Hi, Ella Murray. I'm emailing you in regards to my daughter that is caught up in Tony Harvin's circle of people who make anyone look bad who comes against Gino. Please pray for her that, she's come, that she comes out of that mess. Thank you and God bless you. Sister Anderson, we're going to be praying for your daughter. But let me say this to you, sister. I want you to hear Ella Murray well. The only people that they can make look bad is those people who care about what they're saying. I, I said last week, a week before last, y'all got to get to a point where you don't care. When you get to a point that you don't care what people say, you don't care what people try to do against you. When you get to that point, you have taken the control away from them. You've taken it away from them. But as long as you care about what they say, you care about how they're slandering you and how, you run, how they're running you down, they are controlling you. You've got to get where Ella Murray is at. You don't care. Murray don't care. 
I don't watch those guys. I don't listen to those guys. I can care less what they're saying. And that's where y'all got to get. Hear me talking now. I will be praying for your daughter. But anybody concerned about them making them look bad? They've tried to make me look bad down through the years. But everything they've tried, God turned that thing around and made it a blessing. So you got to get to that point, sister, where y'all don't care. All right? Final email for the night. I'm not going to read the name of this person. Hello, Ella Murray. I'm writing you because my marriage is in trouble. My husband is part of Geno Jennings' cult. And it's destroying our marriage. I don't participate in anything to do with First Church. And he is a part of Geno's church. Recently, he told me that some of the staff at Geno Church told him that if I continue to watch you and not submit to my husband and come to First Church, that he needed to separate himself from me. Leave his wife now because she won't submit herself and go into the cult along with him. And the staff done told her husband that. And her husband is telling her that's what the staff have instructed him to do. If she continue to watch Ella Murray and don't submit to her husband and go to the cult, first church, with her husband, they're advising him to separate himself from his wife. Is that the spirit of God? No, sir. The spirit of God talk anything like that. Not at all. You folks are of the devil. First Corinthians on seven. Now let me, I want to compare what the scripture say to what the staff is advising your husband. First Corinthians, Brace chapter 7, and I want you to start reading round about verse 12. First Corinthians 7 and 12. What did it say? But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. What did it say, son? If any brother hath in the wife that believeth not. Now stop a moment. Paul here is dealing with a brother that got a wife that believeth not. In other words, the wife is an unbeliever. In this case, this sister here. Apparently is a believer. She's following our program, so apparently she's a believer. But Paul here is dealing with an unbeliever. What did the Bible say, son? If any brother hath a wife that believeth not. Any brother that have a wife that believeth not. And she be pleased to dwell with him. She be pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. No. No, Bracey. No. The staff said, separate yourself from him. Let him not put her away. The staff says separate yourself from her. Let her not, let him not put her away. What did it say, son? And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. And, and it goes both ways. The woman that has a husband, brace that do what? That believeth not. That believeth not. And if he be pleased to dwell with her. Now you're dealing with unbelievers here. This sister is a believer based on what I'm getting from her email. The Bible said what, son? Let her not leave him. Let her not do what? Leave him. But the staff is telling him to leave her because she watched Murray and won't submit to you and come to the cult with you. So leave your wife. That certainly is not the spirit of God. He's not being led, sister, by the spirit of God. All right? Let me show you what Jude said about it. Give me Jude, son, chapter one. I want Jude one. And I want you to start at verse 17, Bracey. Jude talked about this system. He talked about these people, and this he, he outlined that this thing was going to take place just the way it's happened. Jude 1 17 said, What? But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken by before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the what, Bracey? The words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. What they say? How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Mockers? Mockers. These are pretenders. They come along pretending to be of God. Pretending to be apostles. Mockers. 
What did it say, son? Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Walking after what? Their own ungodly no, lust. No, they're walking after the spirit. Their own ungodly lust. They're walking after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. Wait a minute. They do what, Brace? Separate themselves. They separate themselves? Amen. If you ain't in their little coat with them, they separate from them. Do you understand? If you ain't in it, and look, they have no problem with separating husbands and wives. They have no problem with that. They don't talk like Paul just talked in 1 Corinthians 7 and 12. My God, man, if the if you got an unbelieving companion, don't, don't put them away. Don't leave them. They don't talk like that. This is the way they're talking right here. And Jude prophesied that they was mockers walking after their own ungodly lust. Read that again, son. What did it say? How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. What did it say, son? Who shall walk after their own ungodly lust. They're walking after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. Sensual. Having not the spirit. No, they got the Holy Ghost. Having not the spirit. Basically, they said they spoke and they talked. Having not the spirit. These folks ain't got no Holy Ghost. We praying for your husband. We praying for him. She goes on to say, I don't participate in anything to do with First Church, and he is part of Geno's church. Recently, he told me that some of the staff at Geno Church told him that if I continue to watch you and not submit to my husband and come to First Church, that he needed to separate himself from me. My husband is also involved in that ungodly debate circle with Tony Harvin. As you know, Tony Harvin has taken your videos and tried to make you look bad, which is how I discovered you and watch you ever since. What Tony Harvin meant for evil, the Lord meant it for good. Please pray for me. I would like to speak with you over the phone about other things involving this situation. Thank you and God bless. Let me say to you, sister, I won't read your name, but I got your name. My number, you're welcome to give my office a call at any time. If I'm in my office, I'll answer. If not, I'll call you back. I'll do all I can, sister, to be a help to you. Listen, pray for your husband. I'm praying for your husband. Do all you can. I hear that you're watching the broadcast. If your husband got the right spirit, try to advise him to watch the broadcast. Because if he got the right spirit, give me St. John, son, 10. Give me St. John, chapter 10. Grayson, I want to start reading around about verse uh, 36, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I want you to get me now. St. John 10. Start reading, Brace it, around about verse 20. Start at verse 24. St. John 10, 30, 10, uh, 24. John 10, 24. Listen to this, writer. If your husband got the right spirit, encourage him to watch the broadcast, and I'm going to show you what would take place. John 10, 24 said what? Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him. What did they say? How long does thou make us to doubt? How long, Jesus, do you make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. If you be the Christ, tell us plainly. When they talking to Jesus, what did the Bible say? Jesus answered them. What did Jesus say? I told you and ye believe not. I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. What did he say? But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus said what, Brayson? But ye believe not because you are not of my sheep. Listen, Ryder. If they are not Jesus' sheep, they're not going to believe the teachings of Jesus. But if they belong to Jesus, if they are his sheep, encourage him to watch the broadcast. And I promise you, this word that's being preached of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if he got the right spirit, it's going to bear witness with his spirit. It's going to bear witness now. If it don't bear witness, it's because he don't have the right spirit. Read the book, son. What did it say? But ye believe not because you're not of my sheep. What did it say, Brayson? As I said unto you. What did it say? My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. I know them. And they follow me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Brayson. He said, my sheep do what, Brayson? Hear my voice. Listen. If he belong to Jesus, sister, he going to hear the teachings of Jesus. It's going to get his attention. It's going to open his ear. What did the Bible say, son? And I know them. And I know them. And they follow me. And they follow me. They, he will follow the teachings of Jesus if he belong to Jesus. Just encourage him to hear the broadcast. If he belong to Jesus, I'm not worried. What did it say, Brace? 
I and I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. They'll never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What did he say, Brayson? My father which gave them me is greater than all. Jesus said, my father that gave me these sheep, he said, he's greater than all. What you say, Jesus? And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Jesus said, they can't be plucked out of my hand and they can't be plucked out of my father's hand. My father that gave me these sheep, He's greater than all. If your husband belong to Jesus, when he hear the teachings of Jesus, it's going to bear witness to the spirit that he have if he's got the Holy Ghost. If he don't belong to Jesus, then when he hear this teaching of Jesus, it's going to aggravate. It's going to vex his spirit because he don't have the right spirit. So let him hear the broadcast and you will, look, you will figure out quickly what kind of spirit he's got. This word is true. This word is true. Listen, for as what Tony Harvin has done concerning me and, you know, spicing, dicing videos and all that stuff, sister, it goes back to what I said concerning the last email. You got to get to a point where you don't care. Listen, I give Tony Harvin full permission. You have my blessing. You have my full permission. Take our videos, spice them, dice them. You can make my mouth go in a different direction. I don't care what you do. I understand the word of God. 2 Corinthians Psalm 13 and 8. Let me show you what I believe. And nobody is above the word of God. I don't, you, there's nothing you can do against the truth. Nothing whatsoever. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 8 said what? For we can do nothing against the truth. What? Wait a minute. What about Tony? We can do nothing against the truth. But what? But for the truth. I don't care what the enemy try. You can't do nothing against the truth. The Lord will turn that thing around and it become a blessing. I'm not concerned about what they do, sister. Elder Murray don't care. They can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Let me show you something. Tony Harvin. I've never met him before. But I do know this. He knows better than what he's saying and what he's doing. He knows better. We have the audio clip to prove that he knows better. Y'all remember, we got the clip. You remember some time ago when we posted it, you know, he contacted YouTube and all of that. Well, we can easily... Post that clip on our website. I can contact my tech guys tonight and say, put that audio clip of Tony Harbin up on our website. YouTube, Facebook, nobody can take that down. Elder Murr is in charge of that. Listen, I advise them not to put it on our website because Tony emailed me and apologized. That's the reason why we didn't do it. All right? It's plain on the clip. The brother is acknowledging that what Elder Murray is preaching is in line with Scripture. It's more in line with Scripture than what our pastor is preaching. It's on the clip. It's Tony's voice. Do you understand? We didn't put it on the site. Because he apologized. Let me show you the danger in what he's doing. He knows better. Give me Romans, son, one. We coming to a close. But let me show you the danger. Here's the danger that many folks overlook. Romans 1, Bracey. I want you to start reading around about verse 16. Run fast, son. What is that? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. What did it say, son? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. What did it say, son? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. What is that? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. What did it say, son? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Here's the danger. Here's the danger, folks. We touched this in Virginia. I'm not going to detail it, but I just want to give you something to think about. Here's the danger. The wrath of what race? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against who? Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. What they do? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Here you got a man that acknowledges the truth. 
but still going along with unrighteousness, supporting unrighteousness, and promoting unrighteousness. This is a clear-cut example of holding the truth in unrighteousness. Don't acknowledge the truth, not only on the audio clip, but to several brothers. Don't acknowledge the truth, but still supporting unrighteousness. What did it say, son? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Really? For God has showed it unto them. God done showed them better. What did it say? For the, invi for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Clearly seen? Being understood by the, by the things that are made. Even? Even his eternal power and Godhead. When the Bible says even his eternal power and Godhead, that's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the power of God, and the Godhead in Jesus Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. So when he's talking about even his eternal power and Godhead, it's talking about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. What did it say, son? So that they are without excuse. You ain't got no excuse. God has shown it to you. What did it say? Because that when they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They didn't glorify him as God. Neither were thankful. And they weren't thankful. But became vain in their imagination. And, and their foolish heart was darkened. Foolish heart was darkened. In order for a place to be darkened, light was once there. What did it say, Brace? Professing themselves to be wise. They became? They became fools. And what did they do? And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. The, the glory of the uncorruptible God here again is Jesus Christ. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 4. My God, the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. So they're going to change God's glory, which is his son, Jesus Christ, into an image made like unto what? Corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They tried to bring Jesus Christ real low. What did it say? Wherefore God also gave them up to listen, uncleanness. Listen to this. Do you see the Bible? Listen to what it said. Wherefore. Wherefore. Wherefore means because of this. Because of them doing this. Because of them holding the truth in unrighteousness. Because of them, my God, man, not being grateful and thankful when the truth was showed unto them, but changing the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image because of them doing this, what did God say he going to do? God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Because you did that. God, the Bible is saying he gave them up to uncleanness through and by the lust of their own heart. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves? Who changed the truth of God into a lie. God knows they didn't change what they call the truth of God into what is God knows a lie. What did the Bible say, son? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. You know that's what's taking place. They worshiping and serving the man, the creature. My God, they so-called apostle more than the creator. Y'all know that's what's taking place. What did the Bible say, son? Who is blessed forever. Amen. What did it say, son? For this cause God gave them up. Do you hear the Bible? For this cause. Meaning, because of them doing this. Or, this is the reason God gave them up to what? Unto vile affections. This is why you see all these vile affections taking place in places like that. Because of this, God gave them up to vile affections. What did it say? But even though women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. God gave them vile affections. It caused their women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. And what else did it do? And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. All because they held the truth in unrighteousness. They weren't grateful when God manifest, showed unto them his eternal power and his Godhead. But they tried to take the glory of God and make it like unto a, just an old image, like unto man and beast and creeping thing. They tried to diminish Jesus for this cause. God gave them up to vile affections. Read it, son. Men with me. Men with men. Mer working that which is unseemly. Working that which is unseemly. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Reaping what they have sowed. What did the Bible say, Brace? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. They rather listen to their apostle, to their man of God, to their leader, teacher, guide, general overseer. They didn't want God. They want their man. What the Bible said. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate mind? A reprobate mind. To do what? To do those things which are not convenient. Not convenient? 
Read it, Bracey. Being filled with all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Amen. Read it. Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Wickedness. Covetousness. Covetousness. Maliciousness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. They full of envy. Murder. Murder. Debate. Debate. Deceit. Deceit. Malignity. Malignity. Whispers. Whispers. Backbiters. All is taking place. All of it is taking place. Open your eyes. This is what they're doing as a result of them turning their back on God. The Bible said what? Haters of God. Haters of God. Despiteful. Despiteful. Proud. They're proud. Boasters. Boastful. Inventors of evil things. Read it, son. Disobedient to parents. Read it, Bracey. Without understanding. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Implacable. Read it. Unmerciful. They don't show no mercy. What did the Bible say, son? Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. The Bible said, knowing the judgment of God, they that commit such things are worthy of what? Worthy of death. What did it say, Brace? Not only do the same. Not only do they do the same. But have pleasure in them that do this. But others who are just like them, who do the same thing just like they do. Brothers, sisters, it's not worth it. When the Lord shine that light, walk in the light. Don't hold the truth in unrighteousness. Don't go to hell for nobody or with nobody. Hell is not a weekend. Hell is not a weekend and you can start over Monday. It's not that way. Hell is throughout eternity. Ask yourself the question, all of you. What preacher, what organization is worth you going to hell for. Email me the name and the name of the preacher and the name of the organization that's worth you going to hell for. Send me the name of it. I don't know any. Thank God for all of you. Pray God that he open you all's understanding to the word of God. Let me say as we get out of here, and those that's traveling to Jamaica with us, you all that wish to receive the discounted rate that the church is receiving at the resort, email us. You can email us. Go to our website, sonofgodlives.org, and email us from the website that you wish to receive a form whereby you can fill your form out. It's got the church name on the top of it, and you can receive the discounted rate. You will email that form directly to the resort or fax it directly to the resort. As long as you got our church heading on it, you will receive the discount that the church is receiving. Again, you can go to our website, sonofgodlives.org, and email us from there. Or you can email me uh, at our secretary's, secretary's email address, which is sonofgodlives20. That's two zero at gmail.com. Again, our secretary's email is son of God lives 20. That's two zero at gmail.com. You can email her, simply ask for a form and she will email it to you. All right. We thank God for all of you. We pray all of you to pray all God, give all of your understanding of the word of God until Sunday. God bless you and peace be unto you. Saints, we thank God for all things. Y'all keep us in prayer. I pray much that the will of God be done in our lives. Lord willing, we'll be back with you on Sunday. Uh, remember.